G'day guys, Liam Fitzpatrick here. Doing a bit of tackle talk today. I've just picked up the new Shimano Stella. That's uh, the SW5000XG. These are the new 2020 models. Uh, they're released in March this year. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a, a bit of a heads up on some of the new features these guys have got, and I'm gonna spool it up. So I'm gonna show you how to overcome any problems you may have while spooling this reel, and make sure you get it you know, rock solid, ready to fish. So straight out of the box, you're gonna have your body, your handle separate. The 5000, this guy comes with a thread that's gonna do left and right hand wind. So depending on which side you wind with, it's gonna go straight in. Some of the bigger models, they come with a little extra threaded piece that you've got to undo the handle here and little screw out and alternate if you're gonna do left and right hand wind. But I'll show you that in another vid. For now, the 5000, that handle goes straight in, left or right, depending on which way you like to wind. And uh, yeah, it locks up and yeah, away we go. So this XG model, this is the 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. Um, suitable for a casting reel. I still use this for my light jigging, just because when you get a jig with a heap of hang time and it's gliding and it's, you know, fish clunks it, I like that quick crank down, get a bit of line back on the reel so you can get a solid hook set. So that's, I'm running the XG, this is gonna be another little light jigging setup. All right, so this model features the tough as nails Hagane cold forge gears. It's also got the rigid aluminium Hagane body. Now that incorporated with this new Infinity Drive, which is extra support on the pinion, the crank power on this reel is just full on. Like you can crank down now, like just turn that handle, get line back, turn a fish's head. Yeah, you know, this thing's way more powerful than the older models. Yeah, and that's gonna come in handy. So with X Protect and X Shield, this reel is now IPX8 water resistant. So you know, I know my reels copper flogging when they're in the gunnel on the side, the rod rack up the top in the rocket launches, salt spray, you know, just salt water getting over them all day. That's gonna be a big bonus when it comes to maintaining these reels. So these new models have even had the drag souped up. They got heat sink, which is now a system that eliminates heat. So you know, when your drag's copping or flogging, you know, under load, screaming off, heating up, it just helps eliminate some of that heat. So you still get an even drag pressure throughout the fight. There you go, that's some of the new features that the old Stella's got uh, packed in there. Um, we're gonna spool it up now. Like I said, I'm gonna get this guy ready for uh, a bit of light jigging. Um, usually, if you're gonna do a bit of spool and have someone there to hold it with a bit of cardboard, screwdriver, get yourself a spooling machine, um, you know, just like something that's gonna grip that spool line. Um, we use machines at work. I'm not a big fan of the machine on a spinning reel. You know, you take the spool off and you're guiding the line by hand. I'd much rather have that natural oscillation that the reel's been designed you know, to lay that line correctly for you. So um, I actually got an old reel here with some, some braid on there. I'm just gonna transfer straight off it. So I'll just be able to crank the drag up on that other one and transfer it over there. Um, I'll show the lay as I'm going. I won't show you the whole spooling process because it'll just be me huffing and puffing and sweating. You really wanna get your drag, um, get your braid on super tight. Uh, so have your drag locked up, have your other reel or someone on there nice and tight. You want to pack this like concrete. Uh, if you have it too loose, when you start you know, conceding line to a fish under a locked drag, that braided line is going to want to cut down into itself and you know, pull in through that softer line, and which is going to cut itself. So you want to lay this stuff like concrete. So really tight, get a nice base layer, at least two thirds of that like hard, hardly turn, you know, like it's... Yeah, it's hard work getting it on there, but once it's that tight, you're not gonna have any dramas. The other thing I'll show you is these reels come with a bunch of shim washers, just little thin plastic washers that you can use to, their spaces basically to pack that spool up. If you needed to, there'll be ones in there you can take out to drop it down. But depending on where your line's laying on the spool as you're filling it up, will determine whether or not you need to put a shim washer in there. Now this sort of stuff, you wouldn't expect there to be a need. Um, it'll probably go nice and smoothly, but um, if need be, there's a couple of different sized shim washers in the box there that you can either raise that spool or lower just to get that braid to go on nice and straight, nice and level. Anyway, I'll tie it up. I'll show you the knot I used to tie to get it on there. Back in the day, we used to put backing and you know, dudes would say, put a band-aid, some tape, something silly. I reckon if you cross hatch, alternating the way you wrap your braid around as you go, lock that off tight, and put it on as tight as I'm saying, you won't have any issue with braid slip. Um, you know, if you don't do this right and your braid is loose, you will get braid slip where 
basically that whole lot of braid on that reel will spin and turn and basically render your drag ineffective. It'll just be the line slipping on a spool and people like, they come in and go, oh, my drag didn't work, what's going on? And yeah, 99% of the time that's the problem. But anyway, I'll give you a few pointers how to spool it up. We'll show you it's spooled up. Um, yeah. And then I'll hopefully get it out fishing. All right, so when I'm getting the braid onto the spool, I'm just gonna wrap around and each time I come past that tag line, I'm alternating on each side of it. So basically just a cross hatch system over that tag end. What it allows me to do is just get a nice little bundle like that, nice and tight where they already don't wanna slide. They're not gonna to wanna to spin. They're wrapped around enough. Get a nice, I just use a uni, lock that off, slide that down nice and tight. That's your solid base point. Um, from there, we just, you know, kill it with strength, you know, lock down that tight that it's constricted on that so much that it ain't going anywhere. So that's how I do that. Do that initial start for that knot, just cross hatch it back and forth, and then we'll tie it off. Just make a big loop, go back through the loop along the main line, and just wrap it through five. When you lock that off, it's gonna close up and it's gonna allow it to slide down and lock all this off. So as you can see there, it just slides right down, lock that off good, and it just grips all that, solid as. Like I said, then the next layer we put over the top of that's gonna be like concrete, so that knot isn't going anywhere. Just trim that tag off nice and close, and we'll start putting this line on. So you can see we've got a nice little baseline there. This is when you check to see if you're gonna have any of the issues of the line concaving, convexing on that spool, and if you're gonna need a shim washer or not, but that's looking pretty good right there, so we'll keep going. You know what I mean? It's a physically uncomfortable wind. It's, you want to get it tight. It's not just a nice, smooth, fast wind. You really want to get it on there like a, like concrete. All right, so she spooled up nice. That's uh, full of PE4. They're the little shim washers that I didn't need. Like I was saying, you wouldn't expect you'd need them in a reel of this quality. Some of the other models, sometimes it just happens. You do need an extra shim washer. Um, if you did need to put one in there, just take your spool off. They would sit just on the on the pinion there. But yeah, like I said, no need for it. Now the Stella doesn't have a little line clip for clipping your line under, but you do get one of these little material bits for your spool. Keeps all the line and everything under wraps. Throw that bad boy on there. All right, there you have it. New Shimano SWC 5000 XG. Fully spooled, ready to go, no dramas. Now, I'm not affiliated with Shimano. Um, I've run the Stellas and that for past decade, uh, predominantly on my light jigging stuff. Uh, so 4000, 5000 stuff. Um, yeah, like they're just, they're the upper echelon of reels. Like they really are, it's, it's, it's top shelf gear, it's quality built. Yes, you pay for it, you know, it is an expensive reel, but like I said, I, my, the first one I've got back here, that thing's 10 year old and still going strong. So anyways, that's it. A little bit of tackle talk, something different on the channel. Figured I'd run through it because it is the new model. You know, a lot of people mightn't have done videos there. There mightn't be a lot of info out there on them. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit us up in the comments if you've got any questions. Yeah, hopefully I'll get some footage of me hooking some fish on this thing real soon. Cheers for watching guys, catch you next time.
And yeah.